Chapter 35. It's not your fault, Elwyn and Tyrion both said in unison. It is. Sophie looked at Alden. Kind, wonderful, broken Alden. It was guilt. Guilt, Tyrion repeated. But what could Alden possibly be guilty of? Elwyn asked. Tyrion knew, even before Sophie said the name. Prentice. That's crazy, Elwyn argued. The council ordered that break, not him. Alden was the accuser, though, Tyrion said as he slowly crossed the room to where Alden lay. And he was wrong. He wiped a tear from his cheek and grabbed Alden by the shoulders. Why didn't you just listen to me when I told you he was innocent? Was this worth it? Sophie choked back a sob. She'd seen the sadness in Alden's eyes as he'd watched Prentice in exile and the hurt in his features when she told him Prentice remembered him and his sorrow and regret as he watched Wiley dance. But she'd been so caught up in her own plans and worries she never thought. If I'd paid closer attention, I could have gotten him help or, I don't know, maybe he wouldn't be... The room dimmed and her legs turned to rubber. Don't you dare, Tyrion shouted, grabbing her arms and holding her up. This was not your fault. It was his guilt that did this, and it would have caught up with him eventually. You can't run from that truth. But maybe he... Don't. Do not let any guilt cloud your mind. I mean it, Sophie. Not unless you want to end up like him. The fear in his eyes was enough to clear her head. Good girl, he said, releasing her. If any thoughts like that start to rear up, you must shove them away. Immediately. Do you hear me? Guilt is a treacherous thing. It creeps in slowly, breaking you down bit by bit. I'd wager Alden's been on the verge of a break since he learned the Black Swan were on our side. That was my fault too, she whispered. Technically, the whole thing was her fault. Prentice had been hiding her. If we're playing the blame game, it's just as much my fault, Ellen mumbled. I should have noticed what was happening and stopped this. Tyrion shook his head. Mental breaks aren't physical things. There's nothing you could have done. And I need both of you to listen to me. The only one who could have stopped this was Alden. He let it fester, which is why both of you must shove away any guilt. Do you understand me? They both nodded, but Sophie was only half listening, too busy replaying her memories from when she was in the room where chances are lost. The headache Alden had when they were down there, had that been a break too? They'd been talking about Prentice at the time it happened, just like how they'd been talking about Wiley at the ceremonies, and yet he'd pulled through that and came back to normal. Why did seeing Prentice's son affect him so much more? Or did it? Did he make it through because she somehow helped him? And if she had, could she do it again? She pulled away from Tyrion and went to Alden's side, trying to seem like she was just saying goodbye as she focused her concentration. She knew what Tyrion would say, but she had to know, had to risk it, had to try. She owed it to Alden after everything he'd done for her. When her mind was as clear as it could be, she pressed her fingers against Alden's temples and pushed into his mind. The fractured memories were even sharper this time. Daggers and needles and icicles swirling in a dark vortex. Tiny splinters of faces and places that were already smashing together into a nightmare world like Prentice's mind. She tried to shove her way through, but the further she pressed, the more she could feel the blackness latching around her, like cold hands squeezing and straining and dragging her under. She fought back, transmitting Alden's name over and over as she searched for mayhem, the mayhem for something, anything, a thread of warmth, a fleck of light, something she could hold onto and draw Alden back. But there was nothing but freezing shards and as she started to sink deeper, she realized that if she didn't break free, she'd be swallowed into the madness like she had with Prentice and who knew if she'd ever be able to escape. She rallied her strength and yanked her mind free, collapsing backwards into someone's arms. That was hands down the most foolish thing you've ever done, Tyrion shouted, and Sophie was surprised to realize he was the one hugging her. What were you thinking of? I'm sorry. Her words were muffled by the fabric of his tunic. I had to make sure I couldn't help him. If there was any chance I could. Tyrion sighed and let her go, and she was immediately grabbed by Elwyn. He spun her around and flashed a blue orb around her face. Sophie cringed as the light hit her eyes, feeling a headache flare. You look okay, Elwyn said, flashing orbs in, another, in other colors. But evidently I can't see mental damage or distress, so who knows? Only Sophie, 
Tyrion said quietly. How do you feel? Devastated, exhausted, angry, scared. Pick an emotion, she was feeling it. But all she said was, fine. Then you're a very lucky girl. I barely managed to pull myself free and I was only in his mind for a second. How long was I in there for? At least a minute. I really wasn't sure you'd come back. Well, I did. And you will not try that again, understood? I need your word on that, Sophie. It didn't work anyway. I still need your word. I really thought it would work. Sophie, fine, you have my word. I just, I don't understand. Why can I bring back someone lost, but not someone broken? Because lost and broken are two very different. Yeah, I know. If she had to hear that one more time, she was going to lose it. I guess I just thought it might be possible. I can do so many other possible, impossible things. Why not this? The only one that mattered. Tears pricked her eyes and she fought back her guilt, remembering Tyrion's warning, which made her wonder, can guilt be reversed? Like if we could make Alden not feel guilty for what happened to Prentice, convince him it wasn't his fault or something, would it heal him? Tyrion sighed. He's not capable of coherent reasoning anymore. But what if we could get through somehow? You saw for yourself how ruined his mind is. But it wasn't empty. There was still something there. And she'd seen even more in Prentice's mind. He could still think and communicate. If Prentice could still function after all that time, then maybe Alden could. A new spark of hope caught inside her, kindling in her heart and pumping through her veins. Maybe Alden could still heal himself. If she could find a way to show him that he had nothing to feel guilty for, maybe whatever small part was left would find the strength to fight his way back. She didn't know if it was possible, but she had to try. And she could think of one thing that could definitely erase Alden's guilt. If Grady was right about the Black Swan.